It's the purpose of this video to simplify many of the complex problems which occur in the MIG welding industry today. Today's welder has got many variables that have to be adjusted and balanced. For example, is he using the correct size wire and the right type of wire? Should it be possibly using a flux cord or should it be a MIG wire? And then what about the voltage and the amperage, the wire feed speed? This has to be balanced very carefully to get a spatter-free weld. What about the gas and then technique? These are all questions, questions which require answers. And it's the purpose of this video film to provide simple, no-nonsense, straightforward solutions to these problems. You know, selecting a power source today is a little different from what it was 10 years ago. The range of size of power sources has changed dramatically as we've gone, and particularly in North America, uh, to thinner materials. The amperage output requirements is much less now than what it was 10 years ago. Let's look at some of the features that you might want to consider when you're selecting a power source. Some of the units on the market offer the uh, two slope outputs, a steep slope and a flat slope. What, what, what does slope mean exactly? Well, in this particular machine, the steep slope provides uh, control during the short circuit. It doesn't allow the current to be too high each time the wire short circuits. So if you're welding thin metals, having a steep slope output provides a little bit better control. And then when you go to spray transfer, you might possibly want to weld 3 16 half an inch steel. Then you would have the flat slope output. The flat slope output actually allows more current if a wire does short circuit so that the power source can respond more quickly to the changes during a weld. Now, a lot of machines basically may not have these two outlets on here, but they will have uh, an output which is somewhere in between the steep and the flat. Again, uh, some machines have the inductance. What is inductance? Inductance is beneficial, again, in short circuit applications. It kind of uh, slows the current down each time a short circuit takes place, so we don't have this instantaneous response and surge and explosion. In other words, it's really beneficial for cutting down on spatter, and because the arc is on time a little bit longer, the short circuit wells may be a little bit more fluid and therefore look a little bit better. When you look at a power source today, you can simply look to see that the power cable is attached to the positive side and that that power lead should in actual fact find a connection up on the wire feeder. It's usually connected to the torch block. The easy way is simply just to check that the ground cable is attached to the negative side. I've always remembered it, the, the old simple method that uh, reverse electrode positive stands for the Republican Party, REP, reverse electrode positive. The common MIG welding current range is 100 to 400 amps. A traditional 450 amp constant voltage power source provides a moderate slope. This slope or performance characteristic is ideally suited for both short circuit and spray transfer applications.
You know, stops and starts in MIG welding are responsible for about 90% of all the defects that occur. And the greatest influence on stops and starts is how you select your wire feeder. Let's look at some of the main features that should be given consideration in selecting a good wire feed system for MIG welding. Consider the following features when selecting a wire feeder. The drive motor is the heart of the unit. A permanent magnet motor runs much cooler than a shunt motor. A permanent magnet motor also responds much faster for improved stops and starts. Gas coverage is critical at the weld stops and starts. A practical wire feeder feature would be a pre and post gas flow control to ensure gas coverage. Also a gas purge switch to eliminate air from the gun. Burn back control eliminates the need to keep trimming the wire for the correct stick out length. Correct stick out ensures minimum spatter at the weld starts. For consistent amperage, a digital wire feed speed readout enables the operator to obtain consistent results. An important safety feature is a cold feed control, which feeds wire through the torch without connecting the current. You know, selecting a MIG gun can be critical if you're a high production shop. There is so much time lost today in production welding because of the, well, the wrong type of nozzle. Maybe somebody should have ordered a heavy duty nozzle. And what about the contact tip? Is it a short one? Is it a long one? Does it suit the specific application? And of course, the gun itself. Is it designed for the duty cycle in which you weld? Can it take the spray transfer? Is it designed for it? There are many factors which should be given consideration in selecting a gun. With argon mixes using up to 300 amps with less than 60% argon time, use an air-cooled 400 amp gun. With argon mixes using up to 400 amps with low argon times, use a 600 amp air-cooled gun. When welding with argon mixes above 200 amps at an argon time over 60%, a water-cooled gun is recommended. When using argon mixes above 200 amps at an argon time over 50%, to extend the nozzle life, use a heavy-duty gas nozzle. We've talked a lot so far about short-circuiting and spray art. What is exactly short-circuit and spray transfer? These are two different modes of transfer which really make MIG welding unique. As a matter of fact, no other welding process provides two distinctly different forms of weld metal transfer. Now with the short-circuiting considered a, a low amperage mode of transfer in which the wire short circuits generally uh, up to about 120 times per second. Then we have the high amperage spray type uh, transfer in which the wire doesn't short circuit and it's generally over 200 amps. Deep penetration, high deposition. So you see we have one mode of transfer short circuiting ideal for sheet metal applications and then we have the other mode spray transfer ideal for thicker plate generally over one eight for three millimeter plate when we understand how to set the parameters for these two important modes of transfer then we truly understand the MIG process So 
Therefore, with MIG welding, it's really the amps that uh, melt the wire. And we have to get amps out of the power source. Now, the voltage will push the amps out, but the bottom line is we have to have a conductor, something for the amps to travel along. Now, if we have no wire coming out of the gun, then we can't draw amps out of the power source. The faster that the wire is fed through the torch, then the more amperage or current it can draw from the power source. Now, you've got to remember that the current actually is fed into the wire just about a quarter of an inch from the end of the contact tip. So it hasn't got far to travel. With short circuit welding, we have to feed the wire at a typical wire feed rate of 100 to 350 inches a minute. That's 2 meters to 9.5 meters a minute. This will deliver an approximate short circuit current range of 70 to 200 amps. When welding thin gauge carbon steels are stainless, start out at the easy to remember 10 o'clock position. If you need more or less heat or weld, increase or decrease the wire feed by one turn. Remember that's 70 inches a minute or 1.8 meters per minute. The next step is to set the short circuit welding voltage. The voltage range for short circuit is 13 to 23. An optimum range is 16 to 18. Why not start out at the easy to remember 17 volts? You know, so far we've talked about the basic requirements for short circuiting. Voltage in around 17, 18, wire feed around the 11, 10, 11 o'clock position, or you could even start it off in the middle, as long as you're in the range. Let's look at some real applications uh, with one objective in mind. We don't want spatter, and we want to do all these applications on one simple setting. Applications like, well, 10 gauge plate, vertical up. Applications like 60 foul material, fillet weld. How about a root pass in a pipe? These are basically short circuiting applications. Remember, the simple rule is if it's less than an eighth of an inch, or it requires vertical up or vertical down, or you're welding a gap, you simply think of short circuiting welding. We go over to the machine. With the voltage, we adjust the voltage to strike an arc on the plate and watch the meter so we've got...